<laughs> Hi everyone, back again because my first video worked. Yeah. Anyway, so I wanted to basically been playing with this idea, and I thought I'd throw it to you guys, see if you guys got any interesting ideas about it. Basically, I've come to a realization that being Asperger's and having a certain upbringing that because of Asperger's, that um, a lot of the more neurotypical traits aren't relevant and um, not prominent in me, and one being uh, a lot of egotistical traits. Now, ego is an important part of the psyche. It's not just off the bat say that's a bad thing. It's uh, mostly born on fear. Usually it's the fear of not fitting in the group, so survival, um, not meeting the needs of your partner, reproduction, um, and other things like that basically. And this is why I don't see the ego being bad, it's a part of life, but it's also not really such an existent um, ability now for, especially for people with Asperger's, I'm talking generally. For neurotypical people, it seems to work just fine. Uh, <laughs> sometimes. But for me, I found that my ego always gets in the way. So I had to remove all of it because basically it was there in some ways. But in a lot of ways, it wasn't. And the understanding I've come to is the fact that this is probably the reason why a lot of my relationships tend to just die off intimate relationships with a partner, not friendships, they seem to be fine. I might have gone and picked people that fit me like that, I don't know. But um, usually there's a few phenomenons happening basically. A lot of the time people tend to look for their opposite sex parent type personality person. And that's usually because of desires that they don't quite have met they haven't quite met or they didn't quite connect with that person and they're trying to make up with that by dating a person that's like that uh, unfortunately I see this all the time quite a few of my friends have actually fallen into this trap and and they are like oh, I don't know why I'm with him <laughs> or oh, I just can't understand her go on guys you understand it better than you think but anyway, that's that's not my job to deal with. That's for them to deal with, and that's their little lesson in life. It'd be f so much fun to just say everything that's in your head sometimes, but you know you can't. It doesn't really go down too well. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So I found that the fact that uh, my ego was never really prominent in a relationship with a girl it was more just just me, the self, because. My understand uh, the understanding I'm working with at the moment is that you've got ego, which is your um, negative desires and your fears. Your positive desires are your sense of self. So basically, you're doing something because you genuinely want to, kind of thing. If that makes sense, I hope it does. And then neutral, basically being objective. So I tend to lean more towards being objective, and I try to be the positive side, the sense of self as much as possible, but it's not easy for me, mostly because uh, a lot of the world and society has taught me that, no, you have to fit in, and the problem is my sense of self, my real self, doesn't fit in like that, fits in by being exactly who he is, and who he is is completely not part of the mould, he's not uh, <laughs> a thousand number in a production line, it's just not that. Anyway, so, I found that, uh, I've looked back and actually examined some of my old relationships and realized that a lot of the time it was, uh, the fact that my ego wasn't there to butt heads with their ego. Like, if they upset me, I don't get angry at them uh, or furious and I don't yell at them and tell them off. That's, that's not me. But, they didn't get any whiplash, their ego didn't take any damage from the situation. And so, because my ego wasn't prominent in the situation, it then resulted in um, them feeling that they could still get away with those kind of actions. 
it made them feel more right, even if they have done something wrong themselves, because they weren't stopping and objectively looking at their own decision making situation and going, hold on, I did fuck up there, because frankly, it's it's the way the ego works. The ego blinds you from your mistakes, so it protects you. But at the same time, it's really not protecting you. It's just put in a buffer to give you a better chance of survival where we are no longer in the wild we don't live in a situation like that we've got a very young civilization we're not civilized at all uh, I don't believe so I think we're far from it but uh, we've got a very young civilization that now requires that kind of higher thinking compared to the basic animalistic understandings you know people say we're not animals and people have this idea that humans are not animals and they really like even subconsciously they don't th they don't feel it and i think that is so disconnected it's kind of fucked up i love my animals i love my dog my dog's the best thing in the world she's always been a person of her own and a part of the family and always been exactly what she needed to be She's the perfect kind of example of being in the moment because she's always in the moment. I love her to bits. She's so gorgeous. And she works, comes to work with me, so she just lies in the sun while I'm trudging through mud or whatever. <laughs> That's what she's doing today. And it's funny that people feel that uh, we're superior to animals. Yeah, so what if we have high intellect? We're not. We don't have the capabilities of a cockroach. We can't be stepped on and actually survive. <laughs> We're not ants. We can't pick up ten times our own body weight. We're not monkeys. We can't swing through the trees on vines. We're not fish. We can't swim under the water. We're not birds. We can't fly. So how, how are we superior? So what if we've got a better intellect and uh, the capabilities to use advancements and tools and whatnot? But I don't see that making us better. It just makes us um, more powerful. We are more dangerous. We're the most dangerous animal on the planet. We are so dangerous we could fuck our own planet up and kill it for everyone. So we should probably start thinking less with the animalistic understandings of things and start using this higher conscious that actually has grown into us. And that's why I think we're not civilized yet because it's still quite a young understanding. We're still relying more on our uh, on our um, fears that are based from ego, that come from ego. Anyway, so back to what I was saying. <laughs> Don't mind me, I've just gone off on a little tangent there. Um, so my ego wasn't prominent and it deflated the relationship because it made the other person feel unsure. Because naturally, normally, if you upset someone because you've done something wrong, they get upset with you and they get angry. Yeah? So then you feel guilty. And you realize you're not actually doing something. Even though that makes you uncomfortable, you know that's the way it's supposed to be. Yeah, exactly. Is it supposed to be that way? Don't think so. But it is the way it is, and this is the way people accept it to be. So me not doing that happens to be a problem in the relationship because it causes that gap in the ego and I don't bring that in I am trusting the person to think about what they've done and make a critical and understanding a decision on their actual emotions it is not my job to improve them it is not my job to make them better it's my job to love them and support them I'll always support them and I'll always help them get stronger but Ultimately, you can't even think, try to do it. You cannot change another person. They can only change themselves. And you can only change you. The best you can do is provide support and love them for who they are as they are. And you know, I love so many people the way they are for who they are. And yet they're so, they have so much difficulty accepting who I am. Which just makes it harder for me to bring out the person who I am. But... It's not such a problem nowadays. Nor does it bother me. It's their lesson. They've got to learn it sooner or later. 
come 20 years, my mates would be like, fuck dude, you kind of knew shit back then that we didn't get, and now we kind of get. And I'm going to have conversations like that with them. <laughs> the problem is by then I'll be a cheeky bugger who's way too in tune with his own emotions because that's what I'm trying to get at. I'm trying to be more in tune with my emotions. That I'll be too playful and too busy having fun to actually listen and talk to them seriously when they're actually ready to be that way. <laughs> oh, well. It's fucking funny how life is. Anyway, I hope you guys got any... Um, Good insights on this. I thought it'd be a pretty good little topic to discuss, and I'm glad to be back on. All right, guys. I see you soon.